Hi, so it's Dr. Danny Fox, and today what I want to talk about is BPD and diffusing explosions, diffusing the situation. Uh, so recently I had someone who, who wrote me an email and they suggested that uh, I make a video on how to diffuse or how to help um, sort of manage a situation when their partner or significant other is about to sort of explode or they begin to get agitated. And what I when I thought about it, I thought, well, why not hit it from both ends? Which is, so if the individual, right, which is what we want to do, we want to pow, empower the individual to manage their behaviors. We don't want to have the expectation to be external in order to control your behavior. So I thought, okay, let's hit it from both sides. So we're gonna, as we go through this, we're gonna talk about how the individual can control themselves, but also how significant others can intervene to also help out. So it's, 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 it's a twofer, it's a twofer. So I'm gonna try to help you, okay? Going from both ends, but the individual as well as the significant other. The significant other could also, um, doesn't have to be a, a loved one or romantic partner. It can be a parent, it can be a friend, it can be whoever it is. So in this video, again, we're going to help you and your, your significant other. We're going to diffuse the anxiety, anger, uh, the outbursts and reaction, the explosions is what we're, we're going to call it in, in this video. Because what happens, what I've noticed, is that a lot of my clients that are along the borderline spectrum, that they're a lot like tea kettles. So they tolerate, tolerate, gets hotter and hotter. They tolerate and tolerate. And again, their tea kettle gets hotter and hotter. And then they just, they explode. And what can we do to prevent that? There's a lot of things that, that, that you can do. And sometimes it's minutes, sometimes it's weeks, sometimes it's seconds. So let's talk about what we can do about to diffuse the situation. Now what's important is the things that I'm gonna talk about here is not a one and done deal. It's something that you have to build the skill over and over, and I talk about that in a lot of my videos about building the skill, the skills that we talk about to manage these uh, borderline, these, these BPD, maladaptive beliefs, behaviors, and patterns. And you can do it. It is very, very possible. Uh, BPD is the most successfully treated personality disorder. There's a lot of evidence that supports that it is a treatable disorder. It is a manageable disorder. So it is possible to do that. But it's not done by a one-and-done deal. Okay? So let's get into it. So first, Right? When you notice that individual starts to get agitated or you feel yourself starting to get agitated, try to calm yourself. Use strategies to help you relax, to help that individual relax. Now recognize that he or she or you have been triggered, okay? that your emotional buttons may have been pressed, but the individual along the BPD spectrum may have been triggered by something that you didn't even realize. And the individual may not even have the insight to recognize what set them off. So the individual's triggered, you've been triggered, the significant other is like, what, why is he or she acting like that? And there's a, huh, I don't get it. They may not get it either, but it's common for a lot of, of uh, others, right? We'll call them others, not just significant others, because that makes it sound like it's just romantic partners and it's not. So that others look at them like, what set you off? And the individual along the BPD spectrum is like, I don't know, you just pissed me off. And they may genuinely not know, okay? Because a lack of insight or impaired insight is very, very common in all personality disorders. So, but it's part of the disorder. It's not that, oh, well, you know, they're lying, they're not telling you the truth. Um, so we don't want to take extra steps. We want to stay present. If you feel that you've been triggered, you want to use your relaxation strategies. Don't worry about what that trigger is right now, right? Just recognize that they've been triggered, okay? And calm yourself before interacting. Now, if you're the other, before you interact with that person, you need to remain calm because you may have been triggered as well. And if you have been triggered and the individual along the BPD spectrum has been triggered, you're both going to collide and then you're going to definitely explode. So you want to both disengage with each other, relax, Right? It's okay to say, I need a minute. I need a minute does not mean you're going to run away for the rest of their life. That's what that BPD individual, the, the individual along the BPD spectrum, may feel or believe or think. You just need a minute. Go in the other room. Maybe agree, we're going to take a minute and not talk to each other. That's okay. Set a timer on your phone. Doop, doop, doop. And wait a minute. 
and don't stew. Don't sit there and think, oh, I'm going to say this and to him or her. I'm going to say this. Oh, I'm going to get him. Da, da, da. Don't do that. Don't make it worse. Okay. Recognize. So if you're upset, it's only going to escalate when you engage. Calm down. Give yourself the minute. Maybe you need two minutes. Maybe you need five minutes. Whatever. Maybe watch some funny videos. It may sound crazy, but watch a funny video will help you feel better. It helps you relax. It helps your brain. Okay? Help your brain. Your brain needs some help sometimes. Help your brain. Take a deep breath. When you re-engage, when you speak, use a low, dull tone. Okay. Um, don't get defensive. Even if there are insults that are directed at you, be above that. Be a duck in the rain. The duck in the rain lets it roll off their back. You don't have to engage. You don't have to scream and yell. If you're screaming and yelling, you've lost the point. If you're arguing for more than a few minutes, you're not arguing about what you're arguing, what, what you believe you're arguing. You are arguing about the relationship. Things have changed. So very early uh, in in my career, when I was um, when I was getting my master's degree, I was like, oh, maybe I'll do marriage and family. And one of the things that, that I took away from that, um, brilliant professor, and he, I remember him saying, he said, you know, if you're arguing more than a few minutes, you're arguing about the relationship, not about what you believe, what seems to be the content of the argument. And think about that, right? So diffuse yourself, give yourself a second, allow yourself to breathe, engage with each other in a calm tone, no screaming, no yelling. Okay. Next, okay. Remain or become aware of your situation, become present focused, become mindful of where you are, right? And how you feel. Now, notice if there are other people in the room, like if you're in a restaurant, manage your tone of voice and your volume. Notice objects, look at chairs, items on the table, look at things that are in front of you. Take a moment, get present focused. Because when we get frustrated, everything narrows. We don't want to do that. We want to expand our view. Calm, expand our view, get present centered, notice things that are in the environment to help you. Okay. Look at the space around you. Look at exits if there are. Look at doors. Look out windows. Take a moment and get centered to think of where you are. Next, try to look non-threatening as possible. Right? No, no clenching fists. Don't do that. Right? Because the other person is going to perceive that as an attack, and it's going to exacerbate the situation. Appear calm, self-assured. Right? Even if you don't feel it, fake it till you make it. Act as if you are calm. Maintain limited eye contact. Don't start staring at each other because if you do, that is going to set off the other person. They're going to feel threatened. Okay? You want to maintain a neutral facial expression. Right? It's like if you play poker. Okay? Many years ago, I used to play poker. I won twice. I played a lot more than twice. But I play, I won twice. It's pretty exciting. But, right? So I would try to think, oh, okay, poker face. Mm hmm. Just try to stay calm, right? You don't have to have, you know, don't have intense eye contact, right? Break that. Place hands in front of you, right? In an open, relaxed posture, as I mentioned. No fists, right? Don't shrug your shoulders, <laughs> right? If you do that, it's going to set them off. That's not what we want to do. We want to diffuse the escalation. Avoid excessive gesturing, pacing, fidgeting, things like that. Uh, pacing is problematic. Pacing shows this restless energy. Uh, when I come out to get my clients and they're in the waiting room and they're pacing, I know that we're going to have to diffuse the situation. First thing we're going to do, we're going to calm down. First thing we're going to do is relax. We're going to take it easy. We're going to get centered. We're going to do a little mindfulness. Sometimes it's with candy. Sometimes it's with the arms of the chair. Uh, I have a fuzzy blue blanket in my office. So sometimes we'll just, you know, the clients will just run their finger on the fuzzy blue blanket. Because fidgeting, pacing, all of these things show that there's a lot of restless energy. It's been building up. So you got to go, 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 go. Because if we don't do that, we lose so much valuable time in session with just venting in your, and we get all over the place and there's so much surface content and things like that. And we're there to work on the core content to manage that surface content, 
Okay, and then you want to maintain a suitable distance. Eight feet or more is, is, is good. If someone's agitated, don't get too close, right? Definitely don't lay hands on someone else. Use active listening, active listening skills. You want to acknowledge the other person's feelings about how they feel. Don't pass judgment on them. Maybe they do feel judged, but recognize that, that that's how they feel. If you think that'll, that'll help them show empathy for that situation, that maybe you can understand why they're frustrated, that they feel this way, that they see things this way. You don't have, it's not agreeing with them. It's just recognizing where they're coming from. And that can really help to, to de-escalate and you want to clarify what they're saying because they may not be clear because they're so revved up right and they're saying things and they may not understand what they're saying just say wait wait, wait. i just want to be sure that i understand what you're saying and if i'm wrong please tell me do, 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 do. and they would be like nope that's not what i'm saying okay it's hard for me to hear you when you yell at me and in session sometimes you know i have to tell uh my clients that when they get very agitated and they're yelling so it's hard for me to hear you when when you're yelling and i want to hear what you have to tell me but it's really hard to hear when when you're screaming um then a lot of times you're like all right you know i'm coming to see him so i can talk to him and we can talk about you know issues so he doesn't hear me all right so then they'll lower their tone a little bit Okay, but I don't do it like I'm not going to listen to you if you don't lower your voice. See, that's threatening. That's going to piss them off. And it's going to make things worse. It's not what we want to do. Okay, and then ask for their ideas. Okay, I hear what you're saying. How do you think we can resolve it? What do you think that we can do? We're going to move you to a focus on the future. What can we do so this doesn't happen again? What can we do together to resolve this situation? And if sometimes, you know, if they're so triggered and so agitated, you go back to calming down, right? Remove, because don't, just because you start to de-escalate, don't have the expectation that then this person is going to de-escalate. There's no guarantee for that. So you may have to do the relaxation part several times. You may have to look as non-threatening, right? Multiple times. There's a lot, this is a, this is not a A, B, C simplistic step. And if, if you are an individual along the borderline spectrum, you know what I'm saying. If you live, love, work with someone along the BPD spectrum, you understand what I'm saying. So it's a lot of patience, but it pays off. Using this strategy pays off. It's helping that other person build these strategies, do things differently for themselves. It is possible and it is a benefit to them. So what we want to do is after you've gone through all these steps, it's looking for the future. How can we resolve this, right? Use the what and the we. What can we do to resolve the situation? Not you need to fix it because that's going to further piss them off and it's going to further exacerbate the situation. It's not what we want to do. We want to de-escalate the explosion and that is what we're trying to do. Okay, How can we solve this together? is is the key and just you know understand that where that person's coming from try to be compassionate try to be patient and even if you're the other you can get triggered too and it's important that you manage you because you'll have to do that as well okay i hope that this video has been helpful uh, please check out some of my others uh, if you're interested and thank you very much for your time and attention take care bye bye